up, welcome to HITC Sport and alright lads, let's get into it. Last week I asked you for suggestions on what to do once this channel hits 100,000 subscribers. Right, about 90% of the comments were about the f***ing scarf. Let's take a look at a handful of those delightful comments. Go to the town wearing only a scarf. But whenever I step foot outside my front door without clothes, people throw holy water at me. Maybe that's what I get for living beside a f***ing church. Go on Arsenal Fan TV. Lads, after what I say about them in this video, I'm pretty sure DT would want to strangle me with my own scarf. Smoke weed live. Do you know how monetization works? Yeah, why don't I just march into the YouTube headquarters and have a piss on their coffee table as well? This guy is acting like I don't want ads on my video ever again. Do a romantic comedy with the scarf. Jesus, this 100k video is going to be the weirdest thing on the internet. Well, maybe not the weirdest. Give Dopey a call. Uh, the one from the Seven Dwarfs? I mean, I'm honestly not sure what this guy wants. But then again, who am I to question the pearls of wisdom from a guy dressed in a Santa suit in the third week of February. Maybe Dopey is the code word for his carer. Alright, getting right into the football. Alright lads, who is getting promoted? Not me, clearly, because YouTubers, we don't really, don't really get promoted, do we? We just sort of balance that fine line between having a job and drowning in unemployment. Please keep watching my videos, I'd rather not have to sell my body online. Again. Old, desperate women have bony nails. So who is going up from the championship? Actually, you know what, I'm going to dedicate an entire video to this next week because I don't think I've actually mentally prepared myself to analyze David Stockdale's performance against Brentford the other day. Was that man high on bat salts or something? Here is one piece of news coming out of that league though. Over 6,000 Sunderland fans have signed a petition demanding Ella Schwartz sell the club. As we all know, petitions serve a huge purpose and aren't just a waste of everybody's time. To be fair, Short is apparently willing to sell the club for about 50 million pounds, with every Sunderland fan thinking about in time. Although, to be fair, living in an age where Kyle Walker is worth more than Sunderland Football Club, Jesus Christ. It was only 18 months ago that Sunderland stayed up at Newcastle expense, beating Man United, Chelsea and Everton along the way. But they were even putting in a bid for Ed and Dzeko. If they put in a bid for Dzeko now, the Bosnian would probably get violently sick. Sunderland's defeat at Bolton has put them rock bottom of the championship, below Burton Albion, a club who play in front of six men and a dog every second week, below Barnsley, a club whose manager just abandoned them to go and put a sacking on a CV at Leeds United in six months, below Birmingham City, who honest to god look like their players have spent every Friday night in the pub this season, Sunderland have won five league games all season. Only one of them has been at home. Just like my attempts to stay relevant, this is absolutely pathetic. Lads, to think Chris Coleman actually gave up the possibility of coaching Gareth Bale in the European Championships, T to this, not only should he fire his agent, burn him alive. It's an absolute shambles of the stadium play. And sorry, son of the fence, but you're 100% getting relegated. Maybe Billy Jones will be able to clear the f***ing ball in that league. Then again, I wouldn't count on it. I do feel bad for some of those. They're going to be playing in a stadium three quarters empty against the likes of Luton and Accrington Stanley next season. Who knows, they could even be in the same division as this man. Who has seemingly made it his life's mission to terrorise Mackhams? I feel like something big did happen at West Brom this week. I don't know, I can't really remember. What I do know is that I think my boss sent me an email saying not to, uh, not to mention it. Don't mention the West Brom taxi stuff. Don't mention the West Brom taxi stuff. Don't mention the West Brom taxi stuff. Don't you just hate when you go out on the piss and you end up stealing a taxi? Oh, f***! Alright, so we touched on Hector Bellerin versus Arsenal Fan TV last time out, and you would have thought that would be the end of it. The Spaniard got his dig in, DT vented on Twitter, Claude is still trying to work out what year it is. Love you, really, Claude. But now a voice recording has apparently been leaked of Hector Bellerin discussing a potential move to Barcelona. But just like Dele Alli's alleged Pornhub debut, this one is a bit difficult to swallow. About 48 hours after he criticised Arsenal Fan TV, in front of a bunch of students who were stroking their tweed elbow patches in anticipation, desperately trying to work out who was this Johnny Depp impersonator and what on earth a heavy D was. It's best you don't know kids, believe me. Anyway, the voice recording is apparently Bellerin stuck in the back of a taxi. No, Gareth Barry wasn't in it. F***! And the Spaniard basically talks about forcing a move back to Barcelona. Because let's face it, why would he not want to? So everyone saw pretty quickly that this was a fake. But let's see who they blamed. Right, so apparently this is all a big conspiracy. Listen, I've heard of people thinking the Twin Towers was an undercover job, that Howard Webb was a Man United fan, that Donald Trump's Twitter is actually operated by a 12 year old kid with half a bottle of whiskey, but thinking that Arsenal Fan TV, a bunch of grown ass men, actually went out of their time to circulate a tape to get back a better run, lights. It's, it's ludicrous. Like you, 
Good morning. They don't talk to me to be like. Good morning. <laughs> I'm crazy, man. On my way to training with my new cup. Do you like it? <laughs> Genuinely wouldn't be surprised if that man had just come straight from slaughtering his entire family with an axe. I love this game! Be happy, share your happiness with everyone! And check my first passenger! Check him please! Check him! <laughs> He's so grumpy! But I don't care! He's free! I share even my happiness with grumpy people! <laughs> because it's Monday! And who care? The weather is... Sorry, it's really bad! But who care? It's Monday! Good morning, they don't talk to me in the like Imagine living with ever a Christ above At half 7am when you're tucking into your lucky charms I'm Irish alright And he's across the room doing the f***ing Harlem Shake Hey, I love you all Except the guy he kicked in the head Do you? I have to walk out now <laughs> So as you can see, it's not just West Brom who let a bunch of nutcases run right in a taxi. Oh sh**. I think Nile Ranger is an example of every aspiring footballer what path not to take. Unless, you know, you'd rather be a 26 year old with nothing to show for your career but a bunch of spells behind bars and a f***ing emoji on your lip. Let's look back at November 2016. Not too long ago, this channel had only been in existence for about two weeks. And this was back when I wasn't consigned to wearing a f***ing ladies old shawl in every video. Life was a much simpler place. I've changed. Ranger insists the penny is finally dropped. May 2017, Nile Ranger hit with prison sentence for online bank fraud. Lad, the only pennies that dropped were the ones straight from the old woman's bank account into yours. Although I'm almost positive he didn't deposit in penny coins. I mean, if you hit someone in the face with a bag full of 200,000 penny coins, you'd probably knock out every tooth in their head. And we're already on this, oh yeah, he was linked to Notts County this week, as Kevin Nolan tries to get the band back together. So from 2009, when that club were predicting world domination, to then signing a bunch of Newcastle United rejects from 20. Yes, that one worked out very well, lads. As a lad, he is a lovely kid. You're a f***ing disgrace, Nile Ranger. You are a f***ing disgrace. I hope you're f***ing better at shooting that gun than you are the f***ing football, because you're f***ing shit. Yeah, I, th I think that one sums it up a bit, bit better. Honest to God, I'd rather listen to Louis Tomlinson than any more of that f***ing outdated song. Been fairly embarrassing for Will Grigg when half of France was singing that goddamn song. Only room to spend the entire Euro 2016 stuck on the bench by Kyle Lafferty and Josh McGuinness. But Grigg had his moment this week when somehow he knocked Man City out of the FA Cup. The quadruple is off. City have been knocked out of that tournament by Wigan three times since 2013. Fabio Delph was sent off for lunch at Max Power, and that's the end of that chapter. Some win for Wigan though. I'm blasting out Oasis at the full time whistle. It was a bit like if Ryan Giggs had spent all those years getting down and dirty to his brother's wedding song. The scene's got a bit ugly full time though when Wigan fans charge the pitch with one allegedly spitting at Sergio Aguero. Like, I don't know why, you've just, you've just beaten arguably the best side in Europe. Yes, I said it. Why is your first thought, oh I know, I'll rush the pitch and aim that pile of February phlegm I've been building up straight at the face of their world class centre forward. A man who could probably sell his spit on eBay and get about half a grand for it. Uh, Philip Coutinho has had his house broken into and here was me thinking he left Liverpool last month. Apparently the burglars broke in but just like when anyone pays any money for Paul McShane, nothing of value was taken. Sorry, by the way, Paul, as a, as a fellow Irishman, I feel like I dig you out quite a lot. Maybe it's just because you defend against centre forwards the same way a hillbilly armed with nothing but a baseball bat might. Just swinging wildly until the danger goes away. It never does, though. You just keep end up getting relegated. So I guess I'm talking about Oxford United twice in the space of a week. I hope we're building up an Oxford United fan base as a result. Sol Campbell was in talks about taking the manager's job last week. And now it's Craig Bellamy. Jesus Christ, is that a football club not know the phone numbers of any actual managers? Or are they just flicking through their Premier League sticker book from 15 years ago and just picking at random? I'm just waiting until Darren Ambrose gets the job. Craig Bellamy as a manager. Jesus. I mean, if we're handing out jobs to woefully underqualified people, why don't you just make me the chief of police? Don't be surprised if you see half the Oxford players finding injury and battering each other with golf clubs in a few months. All right, enough lower division football. Let's touch on the Champions League. So Manchester United bored us all to tears when they turn up at Seville. Those do not really do any attacking. It's not like they've spent about half the resources of a third world country on one player's salary and started the game with Paul Pogba on the bench. Barbers and Madrid are probably already whoring themselves out on Craigslist for services. But despite Jose Mourinho adopting the Joe Weather strategy of refusing to attack the actual opposition, he did find time to blame his medical team for sending out an injured Ander Herrera on the pitch. Wow, that was a horrific voice crack. And here was me thinking he went through puberty about 10 years ago. Oh. 
No. Anyway, somewhere in a South American holiday resort, Iver Canero's lawyer is excitedly reaching for his phone. The Chelsea play Barcelona and it's always good drama when these two play. If it's not Gary Neville making a mess of his pants, or Didier Drogba trying to assault the cameraman, it's, it's something, it's, it's anything. This game did not disappoint. Barcelona had most of the possession, but Chelsea looked more threatening. But as we all know, William hit both posts before scoring in the second half, forcing Michi Batshuayi to take to Twitter. Me, come on. Followed by, it had to go in, Willy. Which, honest to God, is what I'd imagine Adam Johnson sent messages to look like. But Barcelona had the away goal, thanks to Andreas Christensen forgetting that, you know, it's not really advisable to play the ball across your own box to the opposition when the deadliest footballer of all time is, is, is lurking. There were some other games too, like Shakhtar beating Roma and Bayern beating Besiktas. I wouldn't even call the last one a contest. It's like if you put a three-legged badger into a ring with Floyd Mayweather, I mean, no. Anyway, I think that's about it for this one, lads. We are slowly inching towards that 100k mark, in the same way that Newcastle are snailing towards survival. Slowly and, good Christ, unconvincingly. When I finally get my hands on that 100k black, I am going to cherish it more than my firstborn child. Which isn't hard, considering I sold him on the black market for an Xbox back in 2010. Anyway, if you've somehow managed to stick it out to the end of this video, you are a bigger trooper than I was when I was forced to make it to the end of Sex in the City 2. Hopefully you don't also have the sudden inexplicable urge to drown yourself in a barrel of lava. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, give it a share, and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.